If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hey YouTube, T1 Glistener Elf here with... Matt Stapleton. Matt Stapleton, this isn't quite your brew, but this is your take on a brew, right? Yeah, I, I modified the mana base a bit. Um, so this is Cremator Evolution, or Nine Monsters, however you want to call it. Um, it did pretty well on a few moto challenges, um, but the guy kind of fell off the face of the earth, so um, no one's really been working with it recently. Um, I've decided to pick it up because I think it's cool. Um, I don't think it's like a format breaking deck or anything, but I think it's a lot of fun. Um, but I think the first thing that needed to go is the mana base. Um, the original YN, like Cavern of Souls, which is pretty awkward when you're running triple green spells. Yeah, and I'm seeing diversity in the creature type anyway. Yeah, it, the only the only reason that people were running Cavern of Souls was for Kragenwick Cremator, because um, obviously the deck is built around Kragenwick Cremator, if you didn't know. Um, it's a 4-drop 5-4 four for 2 red-red. When it comes into play, you discard a card at random. Uh, if you discard a creature card this way, it deals damage to target, creature, or target player or planeswalker now. So tell uh, me, how are we breaking this? So that's broken with one of two cards, um, specifically Impervious Great Worm. That's the biggest of the group. Um, it's the bio box promo, it's a 1616 for 10, that's not the important part, 1616 is the important part. Um, and the other way to kill people pretty hard is with Galt at Primal Hunger. Um, it's less good than the Impervious Great Worm. Where did you throw Galt? Oh, there oh, you are. It's right here. <laughs> okay. The, uh, Galt is a little less good than the Impervious Great Worm, but, because it's only a 12-12, but it is castable. Only a 12 yeah, yeah, it is castable, though. It's castable, whereas the Impervious Great Worm usually is not. It has the game Super goes Convoke. Long. Yeah, Super Convoke. Um, but the deck is built around Eldritch Evolution synergies, specifically with, um, it's just a toolbox deck with Eldritch Evolution. String Root Geist is one of the best hits, um, with it to, you know, evolve from. And if you need to, YouTube, you can pause 1080p to read these cards. Oh yeah. But, uh, Undying and Eldritch Evolution, a little bit of a combo, same as it was with Birthing Exactly. Slide. One of the strongest synergies with that, um, String Root Geist becomes a 3-2 when you evolve it, and then Sirach the Hunt Caller... Um, which has actually been fairly strong in the deck, gives Formidable, and if you have Formidable, it gives Haste to target creature. So you can actually evolve from a Strangled Geist on turn 2 into Surak on turn 3 and give the Surak Haste. So that's 8 damage swing on turn 3. Yeah. So it's pretty solid. Um, you are a toolbox deck at your core, and you're really as strong as the Cremator package is, um, the kind of the plan A of the deck is the Steel Leaf Champion sort of beatdown. Um, you're a mono green deck that's just trying to kill someone really hard. But you do get to play a lot of good red cards, such as Lightning Bolt, Cremator, and even things like Huntmaster, the Fells, and Hazard Ferment. And so to supplement the Eldritch Evolution, I see that we have a couple copies of... Yep. So Fauna Shaman is Survival of the Fittest in Modern. Um, it's not as good, because it's a creature and can get bolted, and it, you know, you can't do it when you play it, but... We were having a discussion about Magus of the Survival, Magus of the yeah, Fittest. Yeah, something like that. Um, but it's a it's an interesting card that allows you to sort of work with the deck. It's not the strongest and probably is on the chopping block, at least one of them. Two is probably too many, but one is probably fine. Um, but there are some standout cards that you can come get, which would be the one of Sweet, um, with Huntmaster the Fells. Well, I think people yeah. know what that is. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Huntmaster the Fells, Scavenging Ooze, and Hazret are the real powerhouses uh, that you can go get. Hazret specifically has been very powerful. Um, with the deck sort of working around trying to discard the Impervious, uh, Impervious Great Worm at the end of the game, being able to discard cards and it still deal damage with them with Hazard is really, really powerful. So it plays around Wraths, and you've already discarded basically your whole hand by that point, and now yeah. you're Heckbent or yeah. Hellbent. you can be Heckbent or Hellbent with Hazard, which is really, really powerful. Um, it's a bit of a non-bow with Tireless Tracker, but the two function pretty differently in different games. And of course, you don't have to crack the clues. You can save them for later. Yeah. Tireless Tracker, the Bloodborne character in the deck. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then our mana ramp, you've got two Birds of Paradise. Yep, two birds, which are both foreign, unfortunately. German? Um, no, no, that's cool, yeah, man. Yeah, there's a German and a Japanese, I think. And then there are four Noble Herricks. Um, the Nobles, despite not making red, are more important in the deck. Um, the Exalted is gigantic. Yeah. Um, you're At your core, you're a beatdown deck. <laughs> I like 6-5 Steel Leaf Champions. Yeah, you can really hit some people hard. And even just with a turn two Strangle Root Geist, you're already smacking for three with something that would come back even bigger. All right, Lightning Bolt for just regular removal. It's a yep. red deck, so you run four. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, the biggest consideration with the deck right now is whether you want to go more into Naya. Um, as good as Bolt is, it's not Path to Exile. 
Um, mm. And even running like copies of Lightning Helix might be useful. So the question now would be if you want to lean harder into your Naya roots. As you can see, there's no main deck white cards, but you can see that there's two Temple Gardens at the bottom. Um, as good and as then, Temple Garden. Uh, Horizon Canopy. Yeah, the Canopy's actually strong just as a normal land. It just happening for green and being a forest that can cycle is usually pretty strong. Sure. Um, in terms of the, the value lands, uh, you've got the Canopy, but you also have Raging Ravine, which was a recent addition. Um, the other alternative to this is Treetop Village, um, which actually activates for less and can actually be better because of that, but it doesn't produce red. And then there's Keswick mm -hmm. Wolf Run, um, which can, of course it taps for colorless, so it's not great with the Steel Leaf Champions, but the fact that it gives Trample is gigantic in a lot of matchups. Fair enough. All right, and then for your sideboard, real quick. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then while you're pulling out the sideboard, so like you said, two Temple Gardens, uh, double Stomping Ground, including the Japanese one, nice. Absolutely. Uh, four Forests, we'll get to those in just a second. One Mountain, no Basic Plains, right. but again, all the white cards are in the sideboard. Four Wooded, Raging Ravine, Kesig, Horizon, Firelit Thicket to yep. convert your forest into red when you need it. It's actually, the Firelit Thicket's more as a concession to the fact that you're playing a Basic Mountain in the deck. Um, the triple green with a mountain can be tough, but the odds of you drawing mountain are about as, I mean, obviously they're about the same as you drawing Firelit Thicket, but yeah. um, the the problem with the Steel Leaf Champions with the mountain is that you can't cast them, obviously. Firelit Thicket sometimes helps with that, and Firelit Thicket actually is a useful card in a lot of situations. Sure. Um, it's just for the niche situation where you get to do that, and it also helps the mana base be less painful, which okay. it really isn't. It has a lot of come to play untapped lands that don't actually do you any damage. Nice. I, I hence Copperline Gorge, for instance. Oh yeah, Copperline Gorge and all the basics. Um, and the fact that you have things like Horizon Canopy and all the, the little dorks that aren't dealing you tons and tons of damage um, helps a lot. Okay, so then for the sideboard, I, I like the first card you have up there. Oh, That's yeah. a card I've tried to build with a good bit. Sure, yeah, go for it. Okay. Sideboard time. So the main idea with the sideboard is you're just trying to be disruptive um, and trying to play a more fair game. Um, you've got a lot of power in the main deck, so the sideboard really tries to hinge on beating the decks that you can't, obviously. Um, so the main, where we're starting is with the Mages of the Moon. This is good against Tron, and it actually comes in against a lot of mid-range decks that have a lot of problems. Um, greedy mana bases are what you're punishing this. Um, and it also was main deck for a long time, because you are not a very greedy mana base, but with the addition of Rising Canopy and more Temple Gardens, um, you are more of a greedy mana base than you were, so it's harder to play this main deck. And a theme you'll notice is that Eldritch Evolution really makes a lot of these cards from one ofs to four ofs. Yeah, so you, or three ofs. The, oh, well, yeah, like the, it would the be one and then yeah, the right. Eldritch. Yeah, yeah. The, the biggest thing with the sideboard is you are playing white cards, so some examples, and this is all, all of the white cards right here. I got a little excited seeing one of those white cards you're uh, about oh, yeah. to show us. So, Isle and Eretic, Strong and Storm, obviously. Um, it comes in against a lot of decks. It being a 1-4 is pretty okay. Um, it's okay against Control, too. But Storm is really the main thing you're really looking for there. Um, the other Storm hate would be the Damping Spheres, which also comes in against Tron, kind of similar to the Blood Moon, or the Mages of the Moon. Um, Damping Sphere, while not being a creature that you can tutor for, is still pretty solid. Sure. And when you've already got a creature you can tutor for, they're just supplementary, I guess. Yeah. Uh, the fact that creatures get bolted and pabbed and any yeah. number of removals means that a lot of times you need kind of diverse threats, and so Damping Sphere solves that problem in a little bit. Fair enough. Um, one good sideboard card is Rest in Peace. This one's in French, but um, I think most people know what it does. Exiles everything, and then anything that would go into Graveyard it also exiles. Um, it's just another dredge hate. The one little nombo in the deck with it is the Strangle Root Geists, but mm. those are kind of, you can just take those out as well. Um, a lot of the decks that this is good against, Strangle Root Geists is not. So, sure. um, dredge would be a great example. Strangle Root Geists is not really fast enough and usually just gets eaten by their creatures. Um, another great card, Venvala, Keeper of Silence. Um, that probably, Splinter Twin hate yeah. way down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the biggest thing with this is that, uh, Elves and a lot of their activated abilities are in the meta. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably not use needed in a huge tournament, um, sort of in the larger meta, but our local meta has some problems with elves and all sorts of activated abilities. It's also good against uh, decks like Hardened Scales, so that it does have mm -hmm. some um, utility in those matchups. Uh, you'll notice that there's not a uh, Stony Silence in, in the sideboard. Uh, Stony Silence is good, and probably could be in the sideboard, but I, I'm opting for tutor targets in most situations over that. Um, another piece of graveyard hate, 
Relic of Progenitus. It also can come in against control decks and stuff. It's less, you know, oppressive than uh, Rest in Peace, but it's able to kind of gain a little more incremental, than it, eh, incremental advantage. Sure. Um, you know, you've got your new hot stuff, Night of Autumns. They're kind of Kitchen Finks on steroids, do all sorts of awesome things. Kitchen Finks and Reclamation Sage and a 4-3. Yeah. It's a Billy Mays commercial. It does all sorts of stuff. But wait, there's more. The the fact that you can evolve into it is really big. Um, then there's also my personal favorite card in the sideboard called Darla Helion. Um, this is a 5-drop 3-3 three, three with Devour 1. Um, if you don't know what Devour does, whenever it comes into play, you can sacrifice any number of creatures to it. Uh, enters with that many counters, so... With Devour 1, if you devour three creatures, it enters with three counters. Um, when it enters the battlefield, it deals three damage to each creature. So it's kind of like a pseudo-anger of the gods, but it can also be a gigantic creature against decks like humans or uh, any number of go-wide decks, maybe even elves. Um, and then the other last card are the two Slag Storms. Um, these could and may eventually need to be Anger the Gods or the... Um, What's the cycling one called? <laughs> Ooh, uh, oh, uh, I, I, I've seen it. Yeah, Soul Trigger Sons. You. That's the card. I used to play that in Standard. I should know. That's a good card. Yeah. Um, so the reason Sykestorm's currently the deck is because Burnout is a real thing with this deck. Um, being able to just deal three damage to each player is huge in a lot of matchups. However, I think that the cycling is probably better in a lot of matchups. But mm. Anger is tough because you like to play, bring this in um, with you know, your Strangle Group guys in the deck, and you'd like to keep them alive. So, Sweltering Suns is probably better than Slag Storm in this deck, but I also like Slag Storm. It, the fact that you can just deal three um, really complements the fact that you're playing the 16 damage burn spells. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, when you put it that way. Yeah, the, the main thing with the sideboard is you. there are going to be some games where you want to bring out parts of the combo. Um, Galta is one of the easiest cards to sideboard out. As good as it is in a lot of matchups, um, it does have some problems. Um, in matchups where they're pulling apart your creatures, um, yeah. Galt is a lot harder to cast, so he's one of the biggest things to cut. Um, other really easy options to cut are Strangle Geist, which has a lot of problems in certain matchups, but is incredibly powerful against decks like Jund and such. Mm. Um, you also can take out some of the one ofs. Um, there are obviously going to be matchups where Hazard may not be as good, like if it's a much more fast deck like Storm. There are matchups where. Um, Sorak may not be strong, um, kind of similar to Galta, if there's a deck that's like Jeskai Control or Jun, it might be pulling apart your creatures too much to actually get value out of Sorak in a big way. Fair enough. And, and on that note, we have a few more a few more cards left. I oh, see yeah. three we haven't hit just yet. So two of them are Worship. Oh, we're going to save the best for last. All right, let's do Worship Absolutely. next. <laughs> so Worship is a card, um, if you control a creature, damage that would reduce your life total less than one reduces it to one instead. This is obviously very good against Burn. It's good against card things like Dredge. It's incredible against things like Hardened Skills Affinity. If you're able to stop their um, Ballistas, uh, there's a few decks that it's okay against, things like Storm and Jund. It's not perfect against them. Um, obviously with Jund, you're probably just looking to have more creatures, but if you really have a, a Burn-heavy Jund deck, you might be able to bring this in. Um, the go-wide creature decks, yeah, Merfolk. Like Merfolk, Elves. Uh, yeah, Elves, um, Humans. Oh yeah, spirits yeah Humans is incredible. Spirits like, Spell it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Collected Company decks this is incredible against. Um, it's even good against things like um, Storm occasionally. Uh, and there's a few matchups where um, it can really... It just kind of shines against random creature decks. Um, it would be good in the mirror, but I don't think anyone else is playing this deck. <laughs> and then, oh yeah, because uh, Cremator can only target players with its ability, right? Yeah, players oh, and Planeswalkers. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, okay, fair the, enough. Uh, it's also decent against Boggles. Boggles is a hard problem oh, for this deck. Uh, it's I why Spellskite is a legitimate consideration. Um, last but not least, my, I think, turn one Ghostler, T1 Ghostler and Elf's favorite card is Wall of Reverence. It's so janky and I love it. So, Wall of Reverence is a really weird choice, but it's a 1-6 with... Defender and Flying, at the beginning of your end step, you gain life equal to the power of target creature control. It's actually really strong when you're playing 5-4s and 5-5s five and all these gigantic <laughs> creatures. And it evolves really well from Strangle Root Guys. So against matchups like Burn, you can get this on turn 3 and gain 3 life immediately. And it's a 1-6 Defender, so it really does do work against Burn. The fact that it's a gigantic is a big thing. Um, it's even good against decks like Dredge, Elves. It's kind of like Worship. It's backup copies of Worship. Um, but there are a few matchups where it's better than Worship, like decks where they might be able to remove worship better, or if they're just going to drain you, which worship doesn't prevent. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of it. 
it's a lot of fun. If you I want to try see it out. The part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Well, thank you, man. Absolutely.